we are here for the media call of an American in Paris and I have with me Cameron Holmes from Sydney, Leanne Cope from the UK and Robbie Fairchild from New York. Did I get that right? New York International. The show started in Paris, then it went to Broadway, then it went to the West End, and this is the first production ever outside any of those cities. Yeah, it's been amazing to, I think this is also the first time that this uh, show has been partnered with a ballet company, mm -hmm. which has been an incredibly useful um, tool to have, because it's such a dance heavy show. And, and the ballet company is such a part of it. It's with the Australian Ballet. And Robbie, you've been from the very beginning, I believe. Yes, Leanne and I both have. Uh, back in 2013, <laughs> uh, when it was created in New York City and then brought it to Paris. And yeah, it's been incredible to take this to different audiences uh, because there is a different sensibility, there's a different sense of humor. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's fun to see how the different cultures take the show. Yeah, of course, because American Paris debuted actually in Paris. Yeah. What was that like? Well, telling the story of the liberation of the Nazis, you know, from the Nazis to the Parisians by a bunch of Americans and a couple of Brits was, uh, you know, we're like, how are they going to take this? Uh, and I'll never forget our first uh, dress run. It was an invited dress run. And as soon as the curtain came back up after uh, the show finished for bows, everyone was on their feet, clapping in unison. And we were all in tears because we'd never gone through the whole show before. We always were stopping, so we're putting the show together. It was really a magical, magical experience. Yeah. Yeah. Paris was wonderful, um, especially because I play a Parisian character. So it was kind of wonderful and scary at the same time because you wanted to do every young woman justice out there. You used to spend a lot of time sat outside cafes eating croissants watching the Parisian people walk past just to kind of, I was using that as my method acting moment. Love that, love that. <laughs> um, so it was wonderful to kind of start the show there, to have somewhere to build on. And if I ever have a moment where I'm kind of getting a bit lost, I always think back to that um, because it was such a great kind of grounding moment for the show. Paris is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? It is. And it's What's so wonderful about this show is Bob Crowley's designs really bring Paris to life on the stage. So if people haven't managed to ever get to Paris, this is your chance. There so you Australians, <laughs> this is your chance to get to see Paris. So as, as well as being a wonderful show, I'd say it's kind of a tourist trip as well. Yeah, because with the original movie, of course it was uh, Vince Minnelli, and they used a lot of the art of some of the artists that were in their time. Yeah. Did you find that walking through the streets of Paris yourself? Yeah, I mean, Paris is it's full of art, isn't it? Even now, these days, you know, the modern artists of the time, the graffiti artists, you can walk through Paris and see the modern artists of the time. You can go to the Picasso Museum, you can go to the Louvre. I mean, you have everything on your doorstep. And it's wonderful actually being here, because even looking up at this, it's oh, like wow. being yeah. in a, a part of our set in the show, because in Milo Davenport's, um apartment in the Ritz she has something very similar to yes, this wild. so it's yeah there's so much of the art of the time brought into our show not only the music the dance but the actual art as well yeah. because very Jerry being an artist it's um yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly I'm a painter <laughs>
start a florist business in the downtime as well? I did. Um, look, it was always it was a dark period for everyone, uh, and New York City had the it was kind of the hot spot for a while, and the refrigerated trucks on the streets. It was just really dark, uh, and I turned to flowers as a, as a, uh, as therapy when we were doing the show in London. Uh, I lived right next to the Covent Garden Academy of Flowers, so I would barter free tickets. Um, to the show for free uh, floral classes. So the ladies and I had a great rapport. And um, yeah, when, when the pandemic hit, uh, a fan sent me f flowers and I said, thank you so much. And, yeah, I'm actually a floral distributor out of Holland. And I'd love, you know, if you if you ever want, I see that you like to arrange flowers on your Instagram. And so then I was like, well, let's go into business. And so she started sending me flowers from Holland and Alaska and South America and I just started making them. and. Yeah, kind of hired a bunch of Broadway performers who like to make flowers and started a business, because why not? What else were we doing? I love that, because it wasn't the original movie they were using a lot of the artists and the paintings were flowers as well. Mm. Yeah, there's that picture of Gene Kelly holding a gorgeous arrangement, and I tried to recreate that once. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> <laughs> You still have time. I've got time. <laughs> because, of course, you performed on the BAFTA stage, is that right? And the actual, you got introduced by someone very special? Oh, we've, well, we've been lucky enough to perform in quite some amazing places. We've been introduced by... Leslie Caron. Leslie Caron, um, yeah, she introduced us at the, um, it was the... Royal Variety. Royal Variety performance, yeah, and Prince Charles and Camilla were there that night. But we did a performance on Broadway and Helen Mirren presented us as well, which was, do you remember that one? That was on the first With one. With Bob Crowley, right? Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we've also, luck, we've been so lucky, we got to perform at the White House for Michelle Obama as well. So that was, that was pretty special. Wow. We've, yeah, we've, it's, this show is like the gift that keeps on giving. I'm watching Cameron's face. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, I'm just like, oh wow, this is so interesting. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm learning more, so thank you. Yeah. I do my research. Yeah. Shit, <laughs> 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 Oh my god. Really? Yeah, no. I'm taking yeah, notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The G.I. Joe, the G.I. Yes, the G.I. Jerry. G. I. Jerry. G. I. Jerry. <laughs> I play the G.I. Jerry. We both play the G.I. Jerry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, a, a soldier who decides to stay in Paris because it's so beautiful and uh, pursues art and pursues love. Yeah. Which was Jean Kelly's character. And uh, Leanne, yes. you play the French woman. I do. I play Lise de Saint, which in the movie was Leslie Caron. Yeah. Um, and she's just a, a young woman, a young Jewish woman actually, who's coming out. Um, well, everyone's being liberated after the war. And she just happens her first kind of day out of freedom, bumps into one of these two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because Cameron. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so Cameron, you're on two nights a week? Yeah, yeah. Um, Wednesday nights and uh, Saturday night nights. <laughs> <laughs> Watch my shows, yeah. <laughs> What's it like being filling in these shoes? Um, it's tough. Um, it's the, you know, big shoes to fill. Um, he's amazing. Um, you know, he's the OG, so um, a lot of pressure, but um, no, it's, I don't, yeah. Um, it's a great role, and I'm still taking my own approach and and um, doing my own my own way, so which I really enjoy. Yeah, mm. he's killing it. Hey, he's making me step in my game. Stop you know? it. Stop yeah. It. yeah. Hey. yeah. <laughs> well, that's exactly what we want to hear because you've both been doing it for what since 2014. <gasps> yeah. Not the whole time. There was a pandemic. <laughs> that's very true. But it means it shows how great you guys are. You've been doing it for such a long time. You know it inside and out. Well, I think also uh, as time progresses and um, away from that original creation, you realize just how special of an opportunity it was to have a, a role made on you that you get to sing, dance, and act in. They don't come around that often. I haven't experienced anything that has challenged me as much as this show. It's really amazing to, to get to come back to this and still be able to. Um, 
after all these years to come back into a show that you know you 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 you're in New York City right now you're seeing all of like the the Drama League, the Outer Critics Circle Awards, all these nominations coming out, and you go, oh my god, that was us. Yeah. That was us being, a, we got to be a part of that. And like, who knows if we'll ever get to do that again, but um, to get to be a part of that magic and bring it to other areas of the world, mm. um, it's really special. Of course it's got a lot of ballet in it. Is it um, what style of ballet is it? And I believe there's a lot of jazz and tap dancing, is that right? Yeah. Well, she wears point shoes, so yeah, it's there pretty is, classical there's a, lot, times. there's a lot of ballet in it, and Christopher Wilden, um, I, he's kind of a fusion, isn't he? Because he's, he's British, but he trained at the Royal Ballet School, but then danced with the New York City Ballet, so it's kind of a fusion of our two worlds together. Mm. And he has, his, he has his own kind of signature style. But then, yeah, there's a lot of jazz, there's a lot of tap. Um, there's basically kind of ticks every box. There's something for everyone in there. Mm. Yeah. And of course, it's a little bit different to the movie. Yeah, because it's set kind of sooner um, after the liberation. The movie was set more in the 1950s. So, you know, the war had happened and they'd moved past that. And MGM obviously wanted to paint, and people were still painting this very colorful picture of wasn't the war like wasn't it a wonderful war type thing but obviously we know it it wasn't and so we uh, well we no, I didn't <laughs> they decided to set the show closer to the liberation of Paris and it just makes the stakes a bit higher for everyone um, so yeah it's it's full of romance and beautiful art great music beautiful dancing and it's there's something for everyone well of course it's Gershwin it is Gershwin yeah great yeah, it's it's. I think a testament to good music is how many times you can hear it and still be inspired by it. And God, we've heard it a lot. Yeah. Um, and that orchestral music is some of the most gorgeous music. And what I didn't realize is when you really listen to it, how thick the Jewish roots are. Mm. And that's such an interesting, an interesting composer for this musical. It just yeah. makes so much sense. Yeah. Well. Congratulations, welcome to Sydney, your hometown, Cameron. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be home. Yeah. It is great to see you. <laughs> and of course, Chookers for an Australian, well, your Sydney debut you. and, uh, you and your Australian tour. Thank, thank you. you very much. much. Thank you. Yes, Jane. A pleasure, thank you very much. <laughs>